Hey guys, welcome to the channel, welcome to the vlog, it's me Hamza and in today's video I wanted to show you guys how I started my real estate investment journey. For those of you who know me, you know I'm a successful real estate entrepreneur, investor, developer here in Houston, Texas and for those of you who don't, you're gonna get to learn a little bit about me today. I also of course started a massive real estate fund, multifamily related based real estate fund that I exited pre-COVID. I had over 1,500 doors here in Houston, Texas that I sold most of. I have about 400 doors left that I am currently selling right now and you guys are gonna get to see those updates as they happen live on the channel. But in today's video, I wanted to get you guys started and show you guys how I started my real estate investing journey. A lot of you people ask me, hey Hamza, how did you start your real estate investment journey? So I thought it would be a great way for me to introduce myself, of course, um, to those of you who don't already know me. This is actually how I started my real estate investment and development journey. So I moved here from UAE, from Dubai to Katy, Texas. I initially moved to California. I couldn't do business there because I didn't have enough money to do business in California, in Irvine, California specifically, so Southern California. But I had enough money to buy a piece of property in Katy, Texas. And this is exactly how I got started. So I used to drive and I used to grid all of Katy, Texas, the north part of Katy, Texas, which was the cheaper part, of course, at the time, and I found a piece of land that I was interested in. Now we're gonna go to that piece of land in just a minute, but before we go to that piece of land, I wanna show you my inspiration. So I'm gonna drive you guys to a friend of mine's project, Alex's project, and this was actually the project that I found a few inefficiencies in that I thought I could do a better job, so I developed it a little cheaper and I did a little less to it, which I'm gonna show you guys, of course, and I was able to get the same amount of rents or even more actually than what Alex got. But he was actually the inspiration for me to get started in office warehouse, like in the light industrial real estate space. And we're here at his development. So this is what his development looks like. I'm gonna park over here really quickly. And as you guys can see, it's a fairly clean and beautiful development. Oh, got some tints here. Let me get the tints off. Uh, and put down the window so you guys can see what type of development Alex built. So this is a beautiful office warehouse business park. And as you guys can see, it's fully leased out. But what you guys will notice is that Alex has stucco on his warehouses. I did not have stucco on my warehouses. And the reason I don't have stucco is that I identified that stucco was not really a value add for these type of spaces. I could do the same product, build the same type of development for much cheaper had I not put the facade on top of it. So as you guys can see, beautiful parking spot, lots of space available on his development. Let me drive around his development and show you guys what the other side of this project looks like. So he also seems like he uses waste management. I really love waste management. Okay, so this is now the other side of this development. And as you guys can clearly see, this is completely leased out. Now, once again, just for clarification, I have nothing to do with this project. This is not my project. This is a friend of mine's project who is still a good friend of mine. I'm just showing you guys this project so that when I show you guys my project, you guys will be able to see the differences. Now it's really cool because I used to drive the Katy area at that time every single day. I ended up putting about 80,000 miles on my vehicle at the time when I had moved to the US in just one year, gridding and mapping the area, trying to find out what type of real estate would really make a lot of money in the US at the time. And this is the type of asset that I identified. So this office warehouse business park is exactly what I was interested in. I had prior industrial development expertise, so I thought it would be extremely easy to build at the time. Now, I also identified a few inefficiencies with this development. So I identified a few things that he was overpaying for and I thought I could get done cheaper. So I could essentially build the same product for a little bit less money in order for me to make maximum profits. And the way I actually got introduced to the owner of this property, who I mentioned his name before, I'm not gonna mention the name moving forward, but if you guys are watching the video so far, you know who I'm talking about. Anyway, so I actually met the owner of this property, grading this very property by himself, driving one day so at the time i was looking for vendors i was looking for people who could help me develop my project because i didn't know anybody in the united states so i decided to drive all construction sites and get phone numbers so i had this whole excel spreadsheet of contractors and what they did and who the foreman was on the job site and what their contact details were and what roughly it would cost me using those companies to develop my project so i actually found the owner of this property grading this very property when it was completely flat when none of this was built at the time and I stopped here 
and I con I, re I waved at him and he came and he talked to me and of course I then found out that he was the owner of the property and not a contractor and that is how till today we are really good friends we keep each other updated all the time we talk I would say at least once every couple of months in order to see what the market update is like and he's of course developing other projects as well as am I so we keep each other in the loop till today and see how the market is doing and of course the market is doing very well which is why I'm moving out of the multifamily space entirely and moving on to office warehouses I've kind of found my niche I found the way I like to make money it's a little easier it's more automated I've created a process to where it's entirely automated for me but in general these types of developments if you guys are considering doing this on your own or investing with me but if you guys are considering doing this on your own these kinds of developments are fairly automated you don't really have to worry about too much of course if you invested with me shameless plug uh, you would not have to operate these type of deals and could get amazing returns but that's something that we can talk about in another video in this video I just wanted to show you guys how I got started so this is not my deal this is somebody else's deal this was the deal that inspired me to get started because when I met the owner he was just grading the land right and so I got to see exactly which vendors he used exactly which product he used because I used to come and keep myself updated with him all the time on who he is using in order to build his property and I used all those numbers as benchmarks for myself so in a way he was like my mentor and believe it or not he was younger than me so for those of you who think that mentors have to be older than you you are incorrect Alex is in fact younger than I was and is still younger than I am of course but at the time was younger than I was so he was my in mentor he was my inspiration to get started in this. Now, after this, I actually ended up buying a four acre piece of land that got me started in the real estate development space. And I actually ended up developing that, I believe in 2015. So we're gonna drive to that property. It's less than a mile away. And I think the reason that it's just one mile away is because I felt like some level of comfort buying a property right next to this owner. And so we're just gonna go for a quick drive my property. And we're here at my development. Look at that monument sign. That thing is beautiful. It's a beast. That thing cost me like $20,000 by the way to build. So this is my project and as you guys can see, I did not put any stucco on the front. However, I did end up putting some stone in the bottom of the property as you guys can clearly see over there. Now, of course, I realized some of the mistakes or some of the value add that I could bring to my development and that is how I developed this project. Now this place is fully leased out, of course, and as you guys can see, it is doing quite well. We have different types of businesses that are in here that will continue to operate no matter how the economy does, which is why I really love this project. I'm gonna quickly drive around the project just to show you guys how busy this was. So this was actually my first industrial development. I made a lot of money when I sold this development, which is when I realized that there is a lot of money to become a developer for these type of products. And as you guys can clearly see, occupancy is not an issue. This business park is completely occupied and I have no concern and I have no doubt that rents are actually going up significantly for these types of products as people need this type of business to work. So basically, I realized that the previous owner was putting too much money onto the product where he was spending too much in making it look good where it didn't really bump his rent. It didn't give him a justifiable rent bump. So I went with the absolute bare minimum and I'm going to show you guys a few tricks. I'm not going to leave you guys hanging. I'm going to show you the tricks that I used in order to save money to make this development worthwhile for me. So one of the first things I'm going to show you guys is the roof. Now the roof is not clearly visible, but I don't know if you guys can tell from here or not, but the roof is actually not painted. It's not powder coated a color. It's not painted. It is just raw steel. And the reason I use raw steel roofs all over here, over all my buildings, was because raw steel was much cheaper. Now I identified that I don't think people are actually going to be able to see the roof from plain eyesight. So I decided to go with a cheaper roof. That was the first cost saving that I did. The second cost saving that I did is zero stucco. So no stucco on any of the facades 
A facade is basically the front portion of this property. As you guys can clearly see, I have no stucco, but the metal is just such a good color that it actually looks very good. It feels like we don't actually really need that much stucco in order for the property to look good. The third thing that I did to save money is that stone right over there. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on the stone. And this stone actually is scrap stone. And what that means is the stone is actually from a throwaway pallet. And I actually found this pallet because um, there was a multifamily developer not too far away from this development and they were actually throwing this stone away. So I actually ended up paying like I want to say 10 cents on the dollar to pick up the stone and bring it on site to this property and get somebody to install it. Now it's really cool because if you look at the stone, let me show it to you guys quickly once again. So if you look at the stone, you really can't tell that this is unmatched scrap stone. But because I had the person who come in lay it down as a design, nobody could actually tell that this is a scrap product. Look at that. That's actually one of the tenants who is currently on the property and is going to move What's going on, on my, my man? Bar. How are you? So just had an amazing chat with one of the tenants and they're still doing well. They're actually one of the tenants that I put in place when I owned the business plaza. And so this was developed a couple of years ago. I actually sold it. I'm going to take you to my new development and that is where the magic happens. Okay, so let's quickly get out of here. And as you guys can see, this place is popping. This is busy. And so it's very interesting because the new land that I bought is about a mile away from this one. And I think that the reason for that is because I was just so comfortable selling this property that I was actually okay buying another property in close proximity. I felt almost like this sense of security that if I were to build another project close by, I would have similar results. And you know what? Believe it or not, I had even better results on my next property. Now, my next property is a larger property and it is actually the most famous property on this channel. I made a video on how I turned $1 million to $16 million and I'll tag that somewhere in this video or in the comments so that you guys can take a look at that video. But that video is really the claim to fame or my claim to fame. So I'm gonna take you guys on that project. I'm not gonna tell you guys exactly what the $1 million to $16 million conversion was. You guys are gonna have to watch that video to understand it. But I'm gonna show you that just using and scaling up, you guys can actually get out of small projects and start getting into larger projects fairly quickly. Now I will also tell you guys, it's very interesting because this property is currently only partially developed and I already have offers on the deal. Meaning there's people who are willing to buy this deal as is and continue the work, which is amazing. I think that is absolutely insane. The fact that you can do that, that sell a deal that is only partially developed is a big deal because this way, not only can I get out, but my investors can get out fairly quickly. And I like actually, if I could buy and sell deals and sell them in like two years, I think that would be something that would interest a lot of people, including myself, of course, but a lot of people to invest in these types of deals. And we're here at my new property. And what you guys will notice, it's very interesting because I do not have any development in the front. So what I realized over time is that it's actually better to develop these office warehouses in the back because they don't really need frontage and you can develop other projects in the front of the property which is what i plan on doing with this one so i've developed more office warehouses and these ones i've actually optimized the cost a little more by using uh, techniques that can further reduce my cost on them but this is exactly what this property looks like it looks exactly the same as my older deal um, it is just much larger The new deal that I'm building is 126,000 square feet and that's not even the entire property. I have three acres up front that can be used for future development and that's exactly what I plan on doing. So I've developed this portion which is the phase one portion and there's a reason of course we develop in phases and I share that in my one to 16 million dollar video. So if you guys want to understand why we develop in phases that's something that we can talk about either here in the comments or you guys could just watch the video and I'll give you a better understanding. And I have all of this land that I'm going to be developing in the future. So that's something that I am currently working on. And so I'm driving the property to show you guys something that I don't think I've ever shown on the channel. Let me show you guys what I'm looking at. So this is now part of the property and this is a very important component of this development. This is something that you are actually required to do in order to get things like this permitted. This is 
two and a half acres of retention pond. And right here is the road and there's gonna be more buildings coming on that end. And as you guys can see, right over there, we have phase one. Now this development, obviously, I've done a video on it on how I spend $1 million and I'm gonna make $16 million when I'm done selling it. And the only way I was able to do that is by developing it in phases. What that means is once I'm done completing this entire project, that is when it will sell for $16 million. So as is right now, this property is not worth $16 million. It will be once I am done constructing this whole portion, which is gonna take me another eight months or so I anticipate. So what that means is in the next eight months, you guys are gonna get to see me develop this entire property which is going to be so much fun for me and a lesson and a learning i guess for you guys so that's very important that you guys realize that you know the one to 16 million dollars is not just you develop that little itty bitty corner with a little bit of retention you actually have to develop the entire project in order to get those gains or those type of gains now the only reason i'm able to do that once again is because i phase develop that means i develop in phases i have to reappraise refinance and then move forward so it is a little more strenuous it does take a little more time but it is totally worth it in the end can you imagine if i had four or five projects like this i could become a multi-millionaire in a very short amount of time and that's something that i want to show you guys that's something that i want to teach you guys that's something that i want to journal so that it's a reminder for me to show me what my beginnings were like and it's an education for all of you who are interested in joining real estate now i'm getting to the back of the project and this is kind of where my property line ends so this is the back end of my property and this is where it ends and this is right where my detention or retention whatever you guys want to call it ends as well now i did have to spend around three hundred thousand dollars to build this concrete reinforced detention retention pond so that was quite an expense and the funny part is i actually did not anticipate uh, building or spending this much to build this product so this has also been a learning for me. And the learning for me is that each property is truly different. You can't take the same dynamics of a property and apply to another property. Each property has different dynamics, different variants, uh, different permits, different jurisdictions and such. So you have to be very careful where you develop. Now, I like personally developing in areas that have the least amount of restrictions, which is why I like Harris County Unincorporated. So for those of you who are looking to develop land like this and turn it into office warehouse developments, uh, look for places that are easy in zoning or look for lands that are zoned correctly so that you don't have that many issues moving forward. Time is of the essence because time is essentially what holds you back as far as your rate of return. And now that's something that I will talk about in another video. I'm not going to talk about it in this video, how important time is or what the relevance of time is in your project. But you guys need to realize that that is extremely important. And with that, this is my life. This is how I got started in the U.S. I came here in 2014, started from a small project, build a larger project, and now I'm developing this beast alongside a few others. Those ones are just not quite ready yet for me to show you guys on this vlog, um, but I will be showing them later on. So if you guys are interested in learning, once again, subscribe to my YouTube channel and make sure that the world knows about this secret formula. This is very important. A lot of people can become millionaires in just a few years. I did, multi-millionaire in fact. And just like that, I'm gonna end the vlog here. I will see you guys next video.